the entrance and enter barn. Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with light and lamp to meet Christ. Alleluia. Special intention of today's Mass is for Suzanne Boudreau. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. As you heard, today is the memorial of St. Catherine of Siena, a virgin and doctor of the church. Uh, this is the 100th year of the existence of St. Catherine of Siena Parish. And there is a huge celebration that will take place there tonight as they celebrate their centennial. Uh, we are the oldest daughter of, the, of St. Catherine of Siena Parish, established two or two and a half years after them. So our 100th cel celebration will be coming around the corner. So uh, we give uh, thanks to God for St. Catherine of Siena and ask God's special blessings on their community of faith today. Let's come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love, in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church, grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Papus, Paul and his companions set sail and arrived at Perga in Pamphylia. But John left them and returned to Jerusalem. They continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and took their seats. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue official sent word to them, My brothers, if one of you has a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. So Paul got up, motioned with his hand and said, Fellow Christian of children of Israel and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out, and for about 40 years, he put up with them in the desert. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance at the end of about 450 years. After these things, he provided judges up to Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king. God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man from the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. Then he removed him and raised up David as their king. Of him he testified. I have found David, son of Je Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, 
one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial song. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever through all generations. My mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have found David my servant and my holy oil. With my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus Christ, you are the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. You have loved us and freed us from our sins by your blood. Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, no slave is greater than his master, nor any messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand this, blessed are you if you do it. I am not speaking of all of you. I know those whom I have chosen. But so that the scripture might be fulfilled, the one who ate my food has raised his heel against me. From now on, I am telling you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Catherine was born in Siena, Italy in 1347, right smack in the middle of the Black Death. The Black Death killed 50 million people in Europe, which was about 60% of the population of Europe. It's the most devastating illness in terms of the effects, percentage-wise, that, that we know about so far. And uh, St. Catherine was born into the middle of it. Her mother had 24 children. Hello. Uh, half of them died in either childbirth or infancy. St. Catherine and her twin sister were the last two to be born, number 23 and number 24. Her twin sister died in, uh, in infancy. And Catherine uh, and her family, her family was very, very devout Catholic family. Uh, not well off, but uh, her father was a merchant. Uh, they certainly were not impoverished, but they were they were not very well off either. And just from the very early age, she kind of came out of the womb as a very religiously inclined child. And uh, at the age of six, she was already having mystical visions and experiences of Jesus. And she consecrated herself to Jesus at the age of six, although she didn't bother to tell her family about that. They didn't really find out about it until she was 16. Her sister, Bonaventura, uh, died and left her husband. And uh, the mother and father said, well, we think it's in God's plan that you become the, the wife of your sister's husband. And apparently he wasn't a very nice person to begin with. So Catherine nixed that. And when her family insisted and insisted and started putting pressure on her, she went on a hunger fast which would become a hallmark of her life. 
long periods of fasting and sacrifice. She did this uh, hunger fast for a very long period of time. And in a time where beauty was largely determined by the beauty of one's hair and the length of one's hair, she cut off all her hair. So she was like a, a rebellious teenager at the age of 16. After that, her parents said, well, okay, maybe there is something to this religious uh, consecration thing. She told them that she was consecrated to Christ. But she didn't feel a call to become a religious woman, uh, but rather to live in the world as someone dedicated and consecrated to Christ as, as a virgin, but not in a religious community of women. So she spent almost three years in intense prayer and seclusion and had more mystical experiences of Jesus, who told her, I'm happy that you're praying, but there are a lot of needy people in the world, and I want you to get out and begin serving them. And so she began a ministry to the poor, the hungry, and the needy of Siena, and uh, wound up doing that for a number of years. Other women were attracted to this, and they still didn't form a religious community, but many uh, young women of that area began to be involved in that ministry. Uh, St. Catherine was, uh, was not schooled, and so she was illiterate. She could not read until she became a member of the Third Order Dominicans. And when she became a member of the Dominicans, she uh, began to, the Dominican sisters, or the Dominican, yeah, the Dominican sisters, uh, who were affiliated with the Third Order, began to teach her how to read. And she took to it very nicely, although she was already an adult. She took to it very well. And she began to uh, not only read everything she could, but she began to write as well. Now, this was a time in the church, there was a, several decades in the church where multiple men were claiming to be the true Pope. This went on for about 40 or 50 years. It was the great schism in the church. And there were two Popes some of the time, and there were three Popes at other times, all with their courts and their cardinals and their administration really scandalous, right? And we've survived it because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, Jesus said. And they certainly didn't. And Catherine took it upon herself to get involved in all the petty squabbles between the city-states that were going on. And she began to write and pray for the popes that they would resolve this great uh, division. Uh, some of the popes had taken up residence in the palaces of Avignon, France, and through her intercession and her prayers uh, and her letter writing, the great schism in the church was resolved and the popes came back to uh, Rome and finally we didn't have multiple popes anymore. And so she's credited with that. And all of this she did and she died at the age of 33, which was the same age that we believe Jesus died. So her life in many ways tracked his. So, uh, she wrote all of her writings, her letters. She wrote about 400 letters, which were then collected into a book that we call The Dialogue, The Dialogue of Catherine with Jesus Christ. And uh, I have read parts of it, not all of it, but parts of it. And it's very high theology, but very beautiful writings by someone who really had a, love, a deep love relationship with Jesus. She always claimed that she had entered into a mystical marriage with Jesus, that she had a wedding ring from Jesus, which she said consisted of a piece of his flesh wrapped around her finger. And she also claimed that people believed that she had, at least interiorly, the stigmata, although it was not visible on the outside. So uh, a formidable woman, declared to be a doctor of the church, uh, a great inspiration to many, not the kind of life that most of us will be called to lead, but hopefully inspires us to do the most with the life we have. Whatever, we, whatever talents and gifts we've been given by God, whatever our station of life is, we pray for the grace to be all in with Jesus, like St. Catherine of Siena. May she pray for us and intercede for us, our families and our community, for all of our needs, especially on our feast day. Amen. Let's uh, bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father. For the people of God, may we be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in our faith and witness to the Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all those in positions of earthly power, may the Lord grant them charity and prudence in their efforts to bend the arc of history toward justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling with difficult decisions and the burdens of circumstance, may God give them the grace and strength to endure and overcome. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased whose names are written on our Eastern Memorial Board, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Prayer for our protection and healing from coronavirus and our family prayer. Lord Jesus, Jesus you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Allow the vaccine to be successful in halting the spread of the virus. Be with leaders of nations. Give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Grant us peace in this time of uncertainty and challenge. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus, for you are our loving and healing Lord. Our Lady of Prom Succor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie, pray for us. Amen. <clears throat> Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our Archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prom Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our Mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prom Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henriette de Leo, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence 
by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion is fun. If we walk in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, 
as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tomorrow our school children are scheduled to have field day in the school parking yard all day long. Uh, it will be dependent on the weather, but if it is, then uh, we will lock the gates right after carpool in the morning. So if you come to Mass tomorrow and it's, if it is a, a clear day, then we ask you please to park in the church parking lot, not the schoolyard tomorrow morning. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ending. Have a great day. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the wounded souls. Amen.